Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about direct shift continuously variable transmissions or DCVT as Lexus calls it and this is a pretty neat transmission because it combines some elements of multiple different styles of transmission. So it has some things that relate to automatic transmissions, some things that relate to CVT transmissions, and some things that actually relate to manual transmissions. So it's a neat combination of different styles and there are some very good reasons why Toyota does this. I actually got the opportunity to try one out in the Lexus UX200. It is also used in the 2019 Toyota Corolla and so I have a video previously which I made that discusses why they have this style transmission and what the advantages of it are but I don't have a video explaining how the transmission actually works. So in this video we're going to be focusing on how does this transmission actually function. So my goal for this video is by the end of it instead of all of this looking just like a kind of mess of shiny mechanical gears and things uh, and clutches and and whatnot, we're actually going to understand what this is and understand the power flow through this transmission. So it looks tricky at first, my goal is to make it pretty easy to understand and by the end of the video we'll review over this, look at it and have a better idea of how it actually works. So to the whiteboard, here we have a simplified view of what's going on inside this transmission. So we've got our engine, it is going to be sending power uh, through this torque converter to the input shaft of the transmission. So you know similar to an automatic transmission it does have a torque converter as is fairly common with CVT style transmissions. So it then passes from the torque converter and at this point there are multiple paths that that torque can flow. So you've got a clutch pack right here which connects uh, the torque converter shaft eventually to a CVT. And so here you can see the two pulleys of the CVT and the CVT belt. You have another clutch pack over here which can engage and disengage uh, allowing to disconnect the transmission output shaft from this CVT. You have first gear right here which is just a purely mechanical tooth on tooth gear that you've got right there and then you have this gear selector right here. And so similar to a manual transmission it has that gear selector and it uses that mechanical first gear that simple tooth on tooth gear uh, for first gear and then you exit out of that once you get into higher speeds. And so it's got the CVT like a CVT does. It has that first gear that simple uh, tooth on tooth gear like you have in a manual transmission and then it has a torque converter like you have in an automatic transmission. And so let's kind of walk through the operation of when we are starting the vehicle off. So the vehicle's at a dead stop and we start accelerating. So when it is at a dead stop, this first clutch pack is going to be disengaged. And so you are then going to take the gear selector and select first gear. So this will slide over and that will force this gear and this gear to rotate together. This is of course splined on this blue shaft, this uh, green selector, and then this first gear is on a bearing there. So it can rotate freely, but when you have that spline selector connect to it, then these two rotate together. So at this point, your torque is going to come from the engine through the torque converter. It's gonna pass along through these gears, come over to this gear, here to your transmission output, and then to the front differential. So you're bypassing all of that CVT. Those clutches are disengaged, so you're not actually uh, spinning up that CVT and you're just passing directly through a nice efficient path for that power to go. And it can do this up to 35 miles per hour or about 60 kilometers per hour. Now it can disengage sooner, it can get out of that gear sooner if you're light on the throttle, but if you floor it, then it's going to use that entire first gear all the way up to you know the peak RPM, and then it will switch over to the CVT. Okay, so how does it operate using the CVT instead of this gear? Well, let's say we're in that first gear, we're coming up to 35 miles per hour, and now we wanna shift over to the CVT. Well, it's going to have this clutch number two engaged because that means it will bring up this uh, CVT the belt will start spinning up to the speed that we have our wheels spinning at. So now that we've got that spinning, uh, the CVT is ready to go. We're going to disconnect this shifter fork so now the torque transfer will not go through this first gear. Instead, it's going to be passing right here. We'll engage this clutch pack number one. And so now our torque will go from here. It will hit this first CVT uh, pulley and then go over to the other CVT pulley through this belt. And then you'll of course have this clutch pack number two clamped down. And so then you have that output going to your front differential. So your torque now goes from the torque converter down all the way to the CVT and then to the front diff instead of when you are in that first gear going across here and then to the front differential. Now, once you start to get in these higher speeds and you're operating with the CVT, you can lock up that torque converter and then just simply use the CVT to adjust the engine RPM. You, of course, wanna lock up that torque converter for additional efficiency. And so how the gearing works, 
once you are in the CBT mode, essentially you've got these two different pulleys that can come in and out. And so when you start off, you start off in a lower gear ratio. And so this, this pulley right here is going to be expanded out. That means that the engine is going to have to spin very fast. You can see the gear ratio between here to here means that this will have to rotate a lot for this to rotate just once. So this is your output. Your output's going to be rotating slow. Your engine is going to be rotating very fast. That's what happens when you're using a low gear. Then once you get into a higher gear, uh, you know, of course, using a lower ratio, then your engine is going to be spinning slower relative to your output. So that outer pulley is going to expand out. The inner pulley is going to push in, as you can see right here, looking from above. Then looking here at the side, you can see that the engine rotates slowly relative to how fast the output is spinning. Uh, so that's going to, you know, be essentially the CVT's form of a higher gear or a low gear ratio. Now, what if you want to switch back to first? Well, you can actually do that. And so as you start to approach lower speeds, if you're coming up to a stoplight, it doesn't require coming to a complete stop to get back into first gear. It can actually do it while you're moving at low speeds. So you're going to unlock that torque converter, you'll disengage your clutches, and then you'll use that selector fork to put it back into first gear. And then once again, your torque transfer goes through the gears uh, directly to that front differential rather than passing through the CVT. All right, so now hopefully we can understand what we are looking at on this transmission. So we of course have the torque converter right there. That's going to send power over to this first gear, which will then, you've got your gear selector. So here you can see uh, that gear selector, which will be used to select over to that first gear. And that first gear will then transfer power to the output shaft. So there you can see where they are mated up together. And then it sends power to the output shaft right over here. And so that travels down to the differential. Now, if you were to go through the CVT, you go torque converter, that clutch pack locks up. Then here you can see the first pulley and you're going to transfer that torque across this belt to the second pulley. There you've got another clutch pack. And then finally that power is sent through the output shaft. Looking at it from the other side, here you can see that clutch pack coming across and then down to the gearing where it then meets up with the differential. So here you can see the final drive gear and then within that differential you can see the little spider gears. So that is sending power to the front wheels, both the front left and the front right. So, you know, it's not just a mess of gears and clutches. It's actually pretty cool how this thing works. And if you are interested, I have a video explaining exactly why they did this and what all the advantages of having a transmission this style uh, allow for. My cat bucket has decided to interrupt the filming of this video. If you guys would like, you should check out the other video I have, which explains the advantages of this style transmission. I'll include a link to that somewhere for you to click. And... My cat, his name is Bucket, he's awesome. Thanks for watching guys, if you have any questions or comments, of course feel free to leave them below.